Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. I hope everyone is doing fantastically well and welcome to this part two of our ultimate beginner's guide to Marvel Crisis Protocol. And this is a bit of a segue video really uh, because what we're going to be talking about today um, is really important before we go into the affiliation breakdowns. Uh, but before we jump into that, joined once again by Quinn. Quinn, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. I've been told I'm not allowed to swear on these videos. I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> family friendly these ones Quinn this is a theory that you sort of spoke to me about a while ago didn't you and I know you've been toying with the idea of do, doing something around it um and we've spoke about it in videos before haven't we this idea that there are three pillars within Marvel Crisis Protocol um that each character falls in um yeah. but it's not necessarily that you know a character is all in in one pillar in fact you'll be very hard pressed to find anything in the game that only does yeah, one particular it's thing. It's impossible it, it, to find a character that doesn't, like, that, that, it, that is, you know, a soul pillar. They, they yeah. just don't really exist. Yeah, there's exactly, because there's... Designed in this game. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, we're going to go through these three pillars today, and then we're going to talk about some examples, some characters that kind of epitomise each of those ones, and then yeah. finish I, with I'm one at the end that... Because... Calling them the what? Exemplars. Oh, there you go then. Yeah. Let's start off then and talk about, first of all, attrition. Because we've used that term in our videos now for quite some time. Mm. And I think outside of the game, it can mean different things to what it does inside of the game. But it's kind of, in my head, really, attrition is anything that you can do to an enemy or to yourself that is going to either deal damage or help you deal more damage or indeed um, basically keep you in the game for longer. So your own personal defensive tech. Um, you know, like a Captain America, I can do this all day kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, attrition sort of comes from the idea that like it's helping you last longer into the game. Uh, you know... If you have defensive abilities that help you stay alive and not take damage, that's attrition because you're keeping that character around longer. Uh, and then obviously attacking enemies and doing damage to them, dazing them, KOing them, is also attrition because it's removing pieces from your opponent. Like if you daze someone before they get to activate, you're removing actions from your opponent that round. Yes. So like you, you, effectively, it's a denial of resources. It's a, a denial and conservation of resources. Yeah. No, yeah, it is, yeah. So, Quinn, on to the second one then, which is control. And we've sort of deemed this as being anything that displaces um, your opponent or indeed a token or anything like that. So, taking a token off your enemy or, you know, bowing your enemy across the board or using something like Thanos' cosmic portal. Yeah, so the, the way I like to think about control is sort of, it's, it's anything that is like, scenario-focused, like, objective-focused, right? Because, obviously, you mentioned stealing extracts, uh, a la, you know, Black Cat, Miles, Enchantress. Uh, but also, there, there's all sorts of... Any sort of enemy displacement can be useful in terms of scenario, because, you know, secures are a thing that you stand on in this game. If they're not standing where they were, they're probably not on the secure anymore, allowing yeah. you to get it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So then lastly, Quinn, is support. And this is really anything that you do to assist and help your own allied characters, isn't it? So yeah. um, whether that be uh, defensive tech or offensive tech, um, but we'll often find that across those three, anything we're doing, as we mentioned, usually falls into at least more than one bucket. There are some examples of things that are just straight up control or straight up support and attrition, um, but then we've got things like bodyguards that really fall heavily into both the control and support side, uh, Quinn, don't they? Yeah, because they're uh, supporting your character. Even, like, attrition to a degree. Because, yeah. You know, like, there, there are, like, almost everything in this game is going to, you know, be at least two pillars, right? Yes. You're yeah. not going to get things that are just entirely one. You might, but they're going to be few and far between because everything sort of blends into one another. But it's... An, it, the three pillars idea is just sort of a nice way to define certain things and group them and see where they fit. So, like, you know, as we mentioned, bodyguard is all three because 
you're controlling in the form of stopping your opponent doing what they want, which is a form of control because it's messing up their game plan, which typically benefits yours. Uh, it's attrition because you're potentially taking that attack on someone who you is in a less vital position to win the fight than the original target. And it's also support because you are protecting someone, right? Yeah, if you've got a glass cannon, like a, um, not necessarily a glass cannon, but yeah, a character that's a big damage dealer and you want to keep alive, um, but maybe only rolls, you know, three defense dice on, on physical attacks and you've got, you know, Captain Steve Rogers stood next to Scarlet Witch, for example, you're probably going to want to take the hit on Steve because Scarlet's going to be able to do far more in her own activation in terms of damage output and that kind of thing as well. So th these are most definitely, you know, it's not a hard, fast set of rules and you go, that is a support character, that is a control character, that is yeah, an attrition it, it's, character. It's, it's in more of a spectrum. Yes, yeah, exactly that. And you'll see this, we've got a nice graphic that sort of shows each character. So, Queen, let's move on then. So we, 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 we've, we've tried to pick, haven't we, one from each each sort of category. And yeah, I think we've, we've done, I've we've done quite well. Exemplars, uh, sort of um, embody, or like at least a great degree of their kit embodies, like, you know, uh, one of the pillars. Yeah, so starting off then with Attrition, um, I mean, he's one of our favourite characters anyway, Quinn, isn't he? Yeah. But, but, Mag <laughs> but uh, Magneto. Um, yes. So let's let's have a quick look then at, at, at what makes Magneto um, an Attrition character, because that's what we've, we've picked him for. Yeah, um, so I, I can sort of go through the thought proce process of selecting Magneto. Um, I, as you might know, Magneto is very good at killing things, uh, whether that's due to the full rerolls he has access to on Reverse Polarity, or indeed through his terrain throws. Um, terrain throws are, well, once again, everything sort of blends into each other, but I would say that, you know, terrain throws are very heavily in the spectrum of attrition i think i think magneto is probably the the only exception in the game to this isn't he and then people that are playing alongside him because of his leadership actually that terrain becomes and again because not everything is you know in one category it's a little bit of support as well because yeah, obviously if you're magneto always, he gets to generate some power and dish that out to people so it's yeah, quite nice as well there are always going to be like abilities that turn something that would be very strongly in one pillar like and move it over to the other sort of more towards another one yeah uh, and that's just sort of based on the interplay of everything in the game right yeah he's also then got his own um set, uh, def defensive tech as well hasn't he in, yes. in force projection which is super super powerful in the game yep uh there's also you know the virtue you know the fact that he has a rather high health pool uh which in and of itself is sort of a, an attrition characteristic if you like because stamina is, once again, one of the resources that is consumed in attrition, right? Yeah. You lose stamina, but you get power in return. If you lose enough stamina, you're out of the game, right? Yeah, yeah. And we've also put, we've also given him a little point in, in support as well, haven't we? Not just because of those terrain throws that generate power, if he's the leader for, for Brotherhood, um, but he also comes with a tactics card as well that's going to give... Um, an element of support in terms of cover for people yes. uh, within range three as well, haven't you? So he's a great example of a character that, you know, yes, he's got these little tidbits in his arsenal. You know, he's got the, he's got the range three cover uh, with, with magnetic refraction. Yes. He can, um, push people with reverse polarity if they're outside range three. Yes. He's got the power generation from, from the ruins, but, We've put him heavily, I think 12 of the 15 points, haven't we, have gone yeah. into, into that attrition. And that's what he's there for. You know, he's, he is yeah. there to to murder people in the game. So let's then, Quinn, go on to control. Um, and for this one, you picked out Black Cat, didn't you? Uh, yes. And the stats, and again, we'll show them on the screen, but we've given her three for attrition, 12 for control, and actually zero in support because, you know, unless we were using a third party tactics card that was generic she doesn't really offer any level of support in the game does she yeah no i mean there, there is always the potential of her being the one to pay for like say all webbed up but like th these are sort of outlier things that are very you know circumstantial yes yeah absolutely uh, absolutely and the reason we've sort of split 
Black Cat's points in, in the way that we have is basically that there, there is pretty much no character in the game that does not have any form of attrition because so far every character in the game has attack right and no matter how terrible that attack might be in terms of like dice pool or anything else it always has the chance to do damage yeah so that is something that you need to consider uh but in terms of like the control element of black cat uh one you know she's got um called cat burglar i, I want to say is the name of the superpower uh, the one uh that mas the master cat yeah master cat burglar yeah, Master, yeah, Master Cat, Cat Burglar. Burglar. So she can effectively steal an extract off of an enemy character within one. Uh, that's very heavily control-based because it's, allow it's giving you an advantage in scenario uh, yeah. in terms of objectives, right? Uh, there's also the fact that she has Troublemaker as her spender attack, which applies guaranteed stagger. Uh, stagger obviously limits your opponent's actions to one because they have to clear it, unless they have other ways of getting rid of it. Uh, which, you know, can be very influential in terms of stopping your opponent from getting onto objectives, but also it plays into attrition as well, because they might be making less attacks than they normally would, because, you know, they've been staggered. Therefore, it's giving you a leg up in that sort of battle. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Again, it's, you know, we give her um, three for attrition, and it probably is that stagger, really, that just bumps her up that little bit, really, isn't it? Yeah. That, along with bad luck, that, again, she's she's sort of buffing herself in terms of characters that are attacking her can't modify their dice. Um, but, again, it's just another example, isn't it, of how, you know, a single attack, you know, if you'd say to somebody, well, attack is just attrition. Well, you go, well, actually, if you look at her troublemaker, it can dish out stagger, so that's a form of, um, of control. Both in control the right position... Yeah. It can almost be a form of support as well. If you know that that character is going to be activating next, and it means that you're stopping Hulk making two big attacks, um, that can sort of indirectly support your team as well. Because you know, two big attacks from Hulk is never a nice thing. Um, and at the back end of it, you know, if she rolls a, a wild, she's got the elusive as well, which allows her to to advance short. So you'll you'll see that even an attack in this game isn't necessarily just always one thing it can do you know it can do many many things so lastly then quinn is on to the character that probably sits most firmly in one pillar more than any other character in the game and that is wong now you just spoke about how everyone gets an attack no matter how bad they are so everyone automatically gets you know gets one for uh for the attrition piece don't they because they can do that damage yeah and also that's true of control in Wong's case as well because you know he can stand on objectives and score you victory points absolutely yeah point in control yeah like, yeah he can pick up he can pick up objectives or indeed he can secure back points as well can't yeah, he, like if you, the only if you want people to... that are going to have zero in control in in that regard are going to be the likes of nebula and honey badger yeah, yeah. And to some lesser extent, you know, people like Wolverine who have that when they flip as well. Um, yeah. But, they're, you know, on their healthy side, they're still going to be able to do something. Um, he's also got Meditate, which, you know, someone could argue, well, that's not really support because he's generating power for himself. But realistically, he's going to be using that power to then do one of his superpowers, which are all absolutely firmly in that support category. Um, so a faithful assistant, We've got uh, Vishanti's Blessing. And the last thing he's got really is Servant to the Sorcerer Supreme, which... Which is, like, sort of, like, met sort of a point in attrition because maybe he can, like, not die it's, as easily. It's, but, like, it's not enough to bump him up yeah, one, though, is it, in terms like of what he does? It's, like, a zero 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 one attrition <laughs> ability. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then, lastly then, Quinn, we wanted to try and pick a character. Or we did pick a character, didn't we, that was, you know, the, the most rounded character in yeah, the game the, right now what what probably the character that sort of inspired this idea in me in the first place and it's i mean you, you all know that i love him it's dr strange your boy <laughs> stephen vincent strange um vincent strange I, and, I i was gonna say sorcerer supreme but he's not he's not the sorcerer supreme no, no no um so i mean you you may look at Doctor Strange and look at his attacks, those, you know, because fairly decent attacks. But again, we you have to sort of look further into the character and and break it down. And 
he has got. I mean, we we've put him as fives across the board, Quinn, haven't yeah. we? Because even without his Mystic Empowerment, which is the Defender's Affiliation, which is most definitely a form of support and attrition, you know, it really helps out on on and both of those sides. And control as well. Yeah, I mean, it covers all three. Um, you know, his two attacks, um, Bolts of Bedevilment, if it does damage, it pushes the target. You know, Crimson Bands of Sitarak, yes, it's a really nice Mystic attack, but if you can pull Mystic Binding off, it either gives them a stagger condition or just activates. Yeah, now, what, and what better way like of this... controlling a character, Quinn, than going, you're actually not going to have a turn this turn? <laughs> yeah, like Mystic Binding, once again, fits into all three, because yeah. it's attrition because your opponent's not getting to fight. It's support because you are protecting other people that might have been, you know, a- attacked and beaten up by that character. And it's controlled because it's reducing your opponent's capacity to do what they want. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then he's got other things as well. Um, you know, so he's got his uh, Oshter's ref, uh, re- Refuge that allows him to heal characters. Yep. The best named superpower in the game still, Hogoth's Hog Horror, Horror Wisdom. wisdom. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, gives people extra defense dice. I have Agamotto is attrition for himself because it means that, uh, you know, he gets to re-roll all of his all, all of attack dice, or defense dice. Then... Um, obviously exacerbates his attrition abilities in terms of damage output because yeah. typically you'll roll your five dice with bolts of bedevilment and then you'll maybe get a crit or two in there. You're adding those to the dice pool, then you're scooping them all up and re-rolling them if that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So there we go, guys. That is a quick breakdown of you of the, or what we believe to be the three pillars of Marvel Crisis Protocol. Now, we've put this video together because we are about to start a brand new series. You may have seen the first video go up earlier this week. Uh, this is kind of a supporting video to really give some context around the affiliation breakdowns that we're starting to do. Um, so hopefully this has been interesting and will give you, as I say, it's just some, some really nice context. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, go check out the discord it's a great place to share ideas on marvel crisis protocol we also have our merch store and our patreon up and running as well links to both of those you'll be able to find down in the description below and as always it leaves me just enough time to say stay well keep safe and until next time bye for now see you